in the winter of 2011. Had me questioning whether life is even what I feel. Spirit secrets and soft cases. That's when the toddler Ayla Reynolds went missing. Oh, who can be that truthless? Left the whole entire state of main speechless. Tears are still pouring, them will forever remain. Cause Ayla's family will be forever in pain. We are waiting, but forever in pain. 29 Violet Avenue will never be the same. Maybe she's alive somewhere The police investigated, never got nowhere Maybe she comes walking down the street someday Maybe the truth will come out someday It's like the mother that went and got hit by a train No one can ever explain that pain Oh God, it's going Welcome to Stories from the Shed My name is Adam, your host And with me, a man coming home today From his fourth straight first place New England hot dog eating contest Jake, how you doing, bud? I don't feel good. I'll <laughs> be honest with you. It's you a lot of hot dogs. Yeah, you. <laughs> I'd imagine. I'd imagine. Oh, I don't look good. I have a face for podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said it, not me, man. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just said it two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what we're doing here in the shed? Uh, right now, we're sitting here drinking beers, recording the first episode of the podcast. So it would be uh Episode one, season one, kind of a thing. Season one, episode one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Second one. Yeah, backwards. And we're having a couple of beers out here in the shed. Uh, Jake and I decided we were going to throw together a podcast about stories that interest us. Uh, you're going to get a lot of, a lot of true crime, but you're also going to get a lot of different things too. Um, we're we're going to be interactive with social on social media and in other uh, forms. We're going to we have an email address that's set up, and. Uh, Excuse Adam, his phone went yeah, off. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna, I gotta learn to turn that down like we're at the movie theaters here. Oh shit! Actually, can you hand me mine? I gotta do the same uh, thing. I, oh, you might have heard that echo. It's a little bit echoing in here. There's not a lot of insulation. So our podcast is called Stories from the Shed because we're actually a couple of guys in a shed in Maine. Uh, we got electricity. We've got Wi-Fi. We've got heat. So it's not too bad. We don't. Uh, it seems like a, a logical place, I guess, for us to have a podcast. Maybe not so much in the winter months, but yeah. But that's all right. We make it work. The heater is actually a uh, little fake fireplace. It's an electric heater. I'm sure you've seen them kicking around Walmart for seventy, eighty bucks. Does the good. It does a good job though. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually pretty, pretty good in here. We're pretty comfortable. Yeah, and you're sitting right on it too, so that helps. <laughs> We've got a uh, kind of tell you about our shed a little bit. It's not insulated. Uh, we've got a dartboard. Uh, we come out here to kind of talk about some ideas, play some darts. We've got a pet. His name's Dino. He lives under the shed. We yep. don't. We haven't identified what Dino is yet. He's, you know, when we started working on this project, he was scratching underneath the the, uh, the floor a little bit so we could hear him. But I think now Dino's gonna be quiet because it's been been yeah. kind of cold the last. We were few thinking. Days. We were thinking he was a groundhog, right? I, I still think he is. Hold on. Let me ask him. Dino. Hey. <laughs> Dino sleeping, I think. <laughs> it's five fifteen. How could he be sleeping? Well, you know, it's uh, it's pretty dark out. You know. Oh yeah, that's right. It's winter here. I keep forgetting. I know it's kind of hard to believe you step outside and it's like negative butt fuck degrees outside, but you know, sometimes you like to live in your own little little space. So on this uh, on this podcast, we're going to be uh, like I said, covering some interesting stories. Some of them we're already realizing are kind of hard for us to uh, to research into because, you know, a lot of times they're, they're stories about you know things that have neg- negatively affected people, um, so they kind of do do wear down on you. So we're gonna have some uplifter stories to go with that. But also on the show we're gonna be doing a beer review. We're gonna try to do craft beers, uh, locally ones, locally brewed ones, and then we're gonna kind of bre- you know branch out to other brews. Uh, tonight we're drinking Baxter a Baxter Brewing. Stowaway IPA. This is a. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying it. It's very heavy. Yeah. I did not expect it to be as full bodied as you had uh, described. Oh yes, it's very floral, and we're going to be rating our beers here on a uh, four out of five Scully finger. Yep, the Scully fingers comes from Adam's tattoo. He's got a tattoo on his hand that is uh, skeleton fingers. It still needs to be touched up. It's a little faded, but it looks badass. So. And as far as beers go, I'm going to give this one, I think, four out of five Skelly Fingers. What are you thinking, Jake? I'm going with three and a half. It isn't as good as the Elysian that we had last week. You guys won't be clued in on that one unless we drink it again. Sorry. I, I'm actually, I'll leave the post up there. It was a good post. Uh, I mean, a good post. A good beer. 
So I'll leave it up there for those that are, uh, you know, kind of beer enthusiasts. But that's fair. Yeah, we're scrapping that first episode, and this will be our actual first episode. Yay! We've both been kind of waiting to put this out for uh, quite a while. It seems like. Yeah. We've been yeah. talking about it for what three weeks now. I oh, think yeah. Both of us are just tired of the nine to five thing, and this this seems like a cool hobby that. You know, maybe it turns into something. Maybe it doesn't. I hope it does. The you. the other nice thing that I I'm really looking forward to this. This specific part of it is it'll be a nice thing to get people together on like a Friday night or whenever we record. And even if most episodes turn into us, just us two, it'll be nice to have just people come hang out. We have an extra mic. So you guys might hear one of our friends come hang out with us. We got a whole a whole rotating group of people that could potentially be coming through here. That's right. And uh, like I'd mentioned earlier, we're going to be on social media. So if there's stories in your area that you, you know, they don't have to be necessarily current stories. They can be a little bit older. But if there's something that interests you, send us some information. Send us some facts about it, and uh, we'll look a little bit deeper into them. And we'll, we're definitely going to reach back. We're going to try to reach reach back to everybody, I think, right? Uh, well, you're you're taking care of the social media. I'm <laughs> um, doing the ed- I'm doing the technical stuff. Um, Adam is all about the social media. Feel free to give him shit if his grammar <laughs> and his spelling is terrible too. He blames his friggin' autocorrect on his Android, and I I have no tolerance for that. Jake, I'm gonna blame it blame it on too many beers. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe me. I vote that you send me the posts before we post them. <laughs> okay. That way I can read them. All right. So, Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be talking about tonight for our first uh, our first story. We're going to be talking about the most depressing thing I've ever read about. I'm going to be honest with you. This may not be a good idea for our first episode, but it's it's local and it's uh, it's I think it's kind of near and dear to everyone with a heart's heart. Um, we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Ayla Reynolds. Um, she was a 20 month old that disappeared from Waterville, Maine back in uh, 2011. It's a, it's a truly heartbreaking story, I'll be honest with you. Um, I read some of the... I didn't read anything. I watched some of the press that was um, conducted during the search and some of the interviews with the mom and the dad, and it was really, 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 really hard to watch, especially with the mom. She was very clearly um, upset and confused, and it... it wow. Yeah, this story actually um, began on December 15, 2011, I, I think. I mean, the child went missing on December 17th, but I, I think it's important to bring it back to the 15th when uh, the child Ayla Reynolds' mother, Trista Reynolds, uh, filed for full custody of her 20-month-old. Uh, okay, wait, didn't you just say it started on the 11th? Oh, no, 2000, uh, Oh, 2011. Okay, 2011, all right, all right. December, December 15th, 15th. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ayla Reynolds was in the custody of the Cumberland County, uh, but, and then she was placed... Uh, under the care of her father by a DHS agent who had also done a walk around the house uh, to make sure that it was going to be a safe place for for Ayla. Yep. Well, while her mother was in drug rehab. Wait, her mom was in drug rehab? Yeah, her mother Well, her mother was battling, uh, I believe it was a her, uh, heroin. Heroin? Heroin. 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 Heroin addiction. Potato to Heroin <laughs> has gotten really bad up here the last, I don't know, maybe five or six years. I don't, I don't know where it comes from, but I've heard of a lot of people getting on it. Yeah. And it's scary. Uh, one of the one of the people that moved into the apartment that uh, me and my friend had moved out of about a year and a half ago is, I guess the new the new person that moved in there is on heroin. Our old neighbor gets in contact with us every once in a while, and it's uh, they're scary people, from what I hear. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Ayla's mother Trista, you know, kind of fell victim to that as well, and kind of fell into that. But she was cleaning her act up. While she was doing that, Ayla was in the care of her father since since October, really, uh, while her mother was in the drug rehab. Mm-hmm. Um, that, now, kind of leading into the story, on the following day, on December 16th, Justin DiPietro, uh, the father of Ayla Reynolds, sees yep. his daughter for the last time lying in her bed at home uh, at the uh, 29 Violet Ave in Waterville address, which isn't really too far from us, probably about half an hour from our shed to their shed. <laughs> 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 uh, Later, Is it possible the body's in, in his shed still? I hope not. I hope not, I too. hope not. I would say probably not, but... Uh, probably not an appropriate joke to make. I'm sorry, guys. Well, <laughs> uh, later, uh, he tells Waterville police that she was wearing a one-piece pajama with the words, Daddy's Princess, written I, on it. 
Oh, never mind. I was gonna say I don't see how that's relevant, but well, it is kind of relevant when you're looking for a missing child. When you're looking for, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, all right. M- more notable though, Jake, is that uh, her left arm's broken in an accidental fall. Her father fell on top of her three weeks. Yeah, three weeks prior. So her arm was in a cast. Yeah, a soft well, cast. How the hell did he fall on her? How did how does that happen? I don't know. I mean, they he brought her the, to the hospital and I mean, everything was taken care of. Now, was it in a full on cast or was it, was she like in a sling like? You know, all the research that I that I looked up said it was a soft cast, so I'm not sure so ex- probably exactly not what like that a means. Bro- like a, not like one that you would see. Oop, I gotta be careful with my beer here. Um, probably not one that you would see like on a broken leg where it. Oh, well, maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I'm not a, I'm not a medical person. So on the 16th, the last time Justin sees Ayla, is uh, around 10 o'clock at night. Um, and then the on fo- the 15th. On the on the 16th. On the 16th. On the 16th. Okay. And then the following day, on the 17th, is when he reports her missing at 8.51 a.m. Okay. Which sounds kind of odd to me, because I've got two kids, and when they were that age, uh, I would have gone in and checked on them much, much earlier. You know what I mean? You get up, and you're thinking, you know, you're kind of worried. It's just, to me, uh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It seems kind of late to be calling 911. Well, I'm not a father, so I can't really speak as a parent. So I'll, I'll take your word on that one. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it just seemed kind of late to me, but I don't know. Maybe not. Um, DiPietro, he, he, like, I, like I had said, he contacted the, the police by calling 911. Uh, if you want, you can listen to his, his 911 uh, phone call. Unfortunately, in the state of Maine, they don't release the actual phone call itself, but you can find the... the don't they release a transcript? You can find the transcript pretty easily online. I think there's even a WMTW... Um, <laughs> Like a, a YouTube video. Let me let me look here real quick. I feel like I saw this one the other day. You can keep going. I'm going to try to see if I can okay. find that. Okay. Well, uh, as he calls 911, this automatically prompts the Waterville police, local firefighters, warden service, uh, were dispatched. Even neighborhood uh, people, people in the neighborhood were looking uh, for this child by air, by foot. Uh, they even had detectives. How long did this take for them to start looking? It doesn't, same day? I, same day. Oh, yeah. Same oh, day. yeah. When you report a child missing, I, I would say that, uh, especially when that age. Yeah, that's you know. pretty young. Um, the fall, you know, so they, they searched locally the following day now. Uh, now we're talking December 18th. Mm-hmm. FBI agents, police dogs, neighborhoods, other volunteers start searching house to house. Uh, Waterville wardens, uh, I'm sorry, wardens from the Waterville area and surrounding areas scour the riverbanks near the Massalonsky Stream. Police interviewed DiPietro and his sister, Alicia DiPietro, and his girlfriend, Courtney Roberts, who yep. all were in the house the night that Ayla, Ayla disappeared. Oh, uh, so these people should know something. Well, you know what they say? Well, you would think. They say that they checked on Ayla, and yep. she just wasn't in the bed. She just wasn't where how, they had left her. How do you just not... What? What? Right, right, you know. Yeah. What? Where, where did she go? Well, what they say is that there, somebody must have broken into the house... Uh, but there was no signs of forced entry. Uh, oh, it appears that I found this uh, this WMTW transcripts. Well, for the first time in months, we're getting a new piece of information in the Ayla Reynolds case. That's the case of the toddler from Waterville who's been missing since December of 2011. WMTW News 8 has obtained a transcript of the 911 call made by Ayla's father, Justin DePietro, the morning he reported her missing. WMTW News 8's Allie Mile joins us live now in the studio to tell us what they said. Allie? Tracy, Steve, Maine law does not allow 911 audio recordings to be released, but we did get the written transcripts today. According to those, Justin DePietro called 911 on December 17, 2011, at 8.49 in the morning, saying his daughter was missing. DePietro's name has been blacked out, but police told us he called 911 that day. When this dispatcher asked when the last time he saw Ayla was, he said, when I put her to bed last night, my sister had checked on her, um, woke up this morning, went to her room, and she's not there. Then the dispatcher says, okay, and you've checked all through the house. Is there any way she could have climbed out of her crib? DePietro answers, no, ma'am, she, there is no way she could have got, there's no way she could. Um, woke up this morning, went to her room, and she's not there. Yeah, that would be uh, rather confusing as a, as a parent. Well, like I said, and, and he calls in to nine one one at eight fifty one a.m. You know, right, which is kind of late. What makes it late though? 
Uh, I'm, I, I'm like I said, I'm not a parent, but what makes it late? Well, here's the thing. You know, I've got two, I've got two little boys, and uh, a lot of times, you know, you'll get up in the morning early, or you're used to them getting up early. You know, yep. uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know this kid. Maybe this is a child that was normally up early. But either way, um, you get up to do something, or, or even in the middle of the night, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. A lot of times, I would go in and check on my kids, even just to look at them, see the little back going up and down. Right, oh, make sure breathing. they're still breathing. Yeah. Yep. You know, so to me as a, as a parent, that just seems late. Maybe it's not. Maybe it has nothing to do with this. I mean, I don't want to speculate because this right. is, this is an unsolved crime. And, right. And people are real quick to blame this guy. I mean, we really don't know. He he doesn't look good, Jake. He doesn't look good. No, that doesn't look good immediately. But the, I, I, I don't know. I'm not in his shoes. You know, like you said, don't really want to speculate just yet. Um. I believe it was what two days later they took uh, a couple vehicles from the dude's house, right? Yep. Uh, police. Okay, December nineteenth, twenty eleven. Police seized two vehicles. One of them registered to D P A D P H R. D P H R. Yeah, that's Justin. Okay. Yeah, the father. And the other to his girlfriend, uh, who lived in Portland, I guess. Um, police say they are cooperating. Reynolds. Tr- uh, what's her name? Trista. Trista Reynolds? DP, yeah. Uh, Trista Reynolds. Trista Reynolds and Justin, yeah. Yep. Uh, she went on Good Morning America that day and Nancy Grace. By the way, Nancy Grace is, oh my God. Wow. She's awful. Did she call her Top Mom? Top oh, Mom. Oh, dude. She's mom. awful. Have you ever listened to her? Oh, well, when I watched the Casey oh. Anthony one, which I, I don't think we're going to cover that, but. Uh, oh. Top Mom. Top Mom. Top Mom. <laughs> she's the worst. I, I could not stand having her in my family. She, oh. She's the annoying aunt at your Thanksgiving meal that you just want to punch in the fucking head. <laughs> Serious. Oh, my God. But that same day, that same day that she appeared on uh, Good Morning America and, and with uh, on HLN's show with Nancy Grace, yeah. the search swells to uh, 70 law enforcement agents, including wardens, looking at the Masolonsky stream with an airboat. I don't, Jake, do you know what that is? is isn't, that a- isn't that the uh, – the? excuse me. Wow, that beer is really, uh, really there. Um isn't that the one that looks like a little raft with a giant fan on the back of it? Is that what they call that? An airboat? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, maybe I think. maybe one of the listeners can let us know, email us. Yeah, uh, or but, I could just Google it. That's way yeah. easier. <laughs> but yeah, they, they do. They end up ramping up the uh, the search. I mean, they, they know there's something up here. Right. And, you know, in Maine, in December, if that child's outside, it's cold. Yeah, it's, it's cold, very cold you know? outside. Uh, the following day on the 20th now. Yep. Uh, DPHO releases a statement through the Waterville Police saying he doesn't know what happened to Ayla. Investigators drain a section of the Masolonsky stream, w- which I'd imagine is a, is a huge project. I mean, it's fairly oh, wide. I've sure. been up that way. That's right by their house, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I looked at uh, Google. Was it Google? Google Is it Google Earth? Google, Google Earth. Maps, whatever Google it Maps, is. Whatever yeah. it is, yeah. Um, because there were some people that were speculating that maybe she, she walked out of the house yep. and she... Um, Made her way to the Masolonsky stream. Now, guys, if you can Google Earth, it's twenty nine Violet Violet Ave in Waterville. V I O L E T T E. But what you're going to find is that there's a very busy road, um, a couple of roads actually between her and the stream. So now, I don't think that... they were looking for her to have been walked there. I think they were looking more like potentially she could have been placed there. Now, is that a two story house? I'm just I'm just curious because I'm trying to I'm trying to think of in my head. Is it possible for a 20-month-old to get out of their crib and walk downstairs and just walk out of the house? Here's the thing, Jake. It's, it's a very small house. I would feel like for, for a 20-month-old, and even Justin says himself that there's no way she could have gotten out of, out of her bed. But for a 20-month-old, I think that um, – boy, the heat's nice in here. I'm, I'm comfortable. I think <laughs> that uh, – it would be impossible without anybody hearing. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's any way she could have gotten out of the house. And, right. I don't, and to be honest, it's such a small house. I don't think. I think it'd be very hard for somebody to break in unnoticed and abduct a child. Yeah, that's fair. Well, how do you how do you break into a house without without making noise? But there were no signs of forced entry, I was right? Say, yeah, without any signs of forced entry either. Right. So that you got to keep that in mind as you're. Huh. As you're examining what happened that day, huh? Okay. You know, so so far what we have, Jake, this child's missing. Where the father hell did says, she go? Yeah, father says, I have no clue where. Where? Okay, but she's in your house. How do you not know where your I've child got no is? Clue. I've got no clue. And I, the two I other adults understand. at that at that residence were maintaining the same story. Now that same day on the twentieth, did uh, people? Okay. <laughs> uh, um, you know, not not just uh a point i don't know if you say appointed but police and wardens or other people started getting involved and in this area they're examining 
uh, garbage bins, garages, backyards, ball fields. Uh, there, there's a section of woods nearby the home. Mm-hmm. They're inspecting that area too. The yep. FBI child abductions. Uh, I'm sorry. The FBI child abduction rapid deployment team kind of canvassed the whole Waterville area. Uh, police say they still hadn't found the missing child, even though at that wow. point it had only been a couple of days. They've received over 100 tips. It's pretty good for being a small town, I would say. Child disappears at 2 a.m. Who's going to see it? Right. Who's going to see it happen? Or at you any, know what yeah. I mean? So just the fact that they're getting any tips is kind of crazy. Yeah, especially um, uh, especially 100, 100 plus tips at right. that point. And I know if I saw a two year old walking down the street. You know, I'll buy I'll buy his or herself. I think the first thing I would do is be like, "Hey, what are you doing? Pick up the kid and go to the police station." You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I mean at any time of year, but especially in especially uh, in the cold in December. Yeah, right. Uh, the next day, I think they brought in more people to help in the search, and apparently there was a candlelight vigil too at a local church. I wish I knew what church it was. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had read a little bit into that as well. Yeah. Um, Excuse me here. I'm taking a little bit of a beer break. There we go. Fresh glass of uh, some stowaway IPA there. That echo is so loud. Sorry, guys. We're going to work on that. Yeah, we're getting there. But the following day on the 21st, the uh, the search expanded yeah, across 50, Waterville. 50 more people. Yeah. Uh, another 50 members from the uh, – th- these people coming from the main association of search and rescue. There is every possible response unit there, it seems. There's so many – they're not all. They're not all government. A, wi- you know, a lot of, of the them, government. A lot of them are volunteers. Yeah, you know, people like you and I that that live in the area. You know, that uh, maybe knew this family. Right. You know, they were out trying to find this child. Yeah. You know, at 20 months old, uh, and like I think you touched on it a little bit that same day on the 21st, there was a, a candlelight vigil held at a local church. There was nearly a hundred people that had gone there. Uh, wow. Yeah, and showed their support to the family. Right. Now the next day, December 22nd. Six days now into the search. Okay, now we're six days deep into this. Now yep. investigators decide to put crime scene tape around 29 Violet Ave. Uh, two of the top state's homicide investigators visit the house, and the search starts to intensify as they're looking for clues. Wait, why are they bringing homicide investigators in? Well, you know what? That's, that's not good. They're not finding anything, Jake. They're, they're not, not finding, finding anything. anything. They, they, they've continued to search the, the stream close by. Yep. They haven't found anything. Okay, up, up until now. Okay, but and, I wonder what makes them think it's a homicide at that point. Well, the thing that – here's the thing. Um, a child's gone missing, and, and they've already decided that there was no signs of forced entry. Mm-hmm. So it looks more like the child came from inside the house to out as yep. opposed to somebody coming in. You know, so I think now they're starting to look at Justin and the other, uh, the other people in this house. And it was just him and the two, the two other people, That's right? right, his sister – and is is it his sister's friend? And, and, no, no, his sister his and his and his and girlfriend. It, oh, and I think okay. her small child was there too. I mean, very small, really? I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I believe. Huh. Uh, I've I've read stories where there was a small child that was there. I've read some that were not, so I'm not certain on that one. Uh, but what kind of gets me a little bit is that you would think, with it being a 20 month old child going missing in the in winter, they would have wait. They would have put up a uh, crime tape a little bit sooner than six days. Think about well, I mean, six well, days. If they had found anything in the house. But I wonder why they didn't search the house to begin with. I, I, I'm sure they did. I mean, you know, it says here that investigators had gone in. The FBI was getting involved. And I think that at this point, maybe they had found something. And that's why they decided to put up the crime tape. Maybe they were like, whoa, there was, there was something that happened here. Right. But why would you wait six days? My, my, well, and I'm not, I'm not an expert, but just speculating in my head, why wouldn't you search the house as the law enforcement before you start searching outside? Or why wouldn't you do them? Why wouldn't you do them um, concurrently? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. At I mean, the same time? I mean, you I know don't know. I mean? I'm not a, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that for you, but huh. um, to well, me, it seems like they, I would have treated it as foul play right away. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the policy is. So it's hard for me to speculate on what they were thinking, how they decided. But to right. me, as, as somebody that's not really educated in the ways of you know how police conduct their searches, I I don't know. I just six days six days is a long time, Jake. Right. Um, but that yeah, and then uh, that was on the twenty second. Now the following day, uh, the twenty the, um, the twenty second into the twenty third, mm-hmm. there was overnight snow, and that kind of ended the ground search. Yeah, who's trying to search it? Now, Night foot, in the snow and footprints are covered with fresh snow. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. It just makes it harder. Uh, and and that same day. Trista Reynolds goes on NBC's Today Show, and mm-hmm. she blames Justin for not keeping Ayla safe in hopes that her daughter will be, uh, br- you know, brought back. 
you know, that he'll say something. Right. You know, so this kind of tells me, uh, you know, that she thinks that he might have had something to do with this. She's playing with him, Justin. You know, if you know something, let's let's get Ayla back. You know, before Christmas. You know, and, and with the way that sounds, it kind of sounds like they're playing a game with each other. I hope that's not the case. Wow, well, I hope not that's, either. That's not. That's not okay. That same day, dozens gas. I would. I would hope not, though. Come on. Yeah, that's no, your I would, kid. I would hope not. That same day, though, uh, dozens gathered uh, for candlelight vigil and at uh, Congress Square in Portland. It's a you know pretty pretty big place. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many people. I mean, it says dozens. What? That's what I've got. Uh, I bet you over there they, they do a lot of stuff like that. Right. Yeah. That Portland's actually a lot of times. That's a, that's a pretty common gathering place. I feel like for any sort of any sort of even like a political movement or just trying to make a statement. That's a pretty big. It's a pretty common place. Yeah. Now now the following day, Christmas Eve, Jake. Yep. Waterville police appeal for a break in media coverage so they can do their work outside of the microscope. That's so, probably the best thing. They they can't they can't be dealing with constant speculation while they're trying to trying to run an investigation. Yeah. It's distracting. Yeah, well that same day crime scene evidence tape seals all doors and windows of the house. They're in. They're in. They're, they're in. going in for this house. Excuse me guys, it's been a long day. Yeah. Yeah, it has. And these beers are kicking in, but yep. we got to keep through this story. <laughs> but yeah, they uh at that point, they're they're really looking in. Now this is Christmas Eve. Then they skip Christmas. Yeah, we're gonna fast forward. Like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two, two days later on the twenty sixth. Yep. Yeah. Uh, ten days into the investigation, this is a, a a whole week and a half later. Please say for the first time they don't believe that Ayla left the house on her own. I, I would totally believe that. Like we said earlier, what what two month old is just, or two year old excuse me two month not even close uh, yeah um what two year old is just going to get up and walk out on their own without being noticed immediately you're going to make as a two year old you're going to make all kinds of noise you're going to have to climb over the the arm or the side of your crib and you're going to fall and just that is going to be enough to wake someone up i mean that shit's not I mean, it's possible. Right. It's just not probable. What, right. Would you sleep with your door open or something? Yeah, exactly. What did you sleep? That no. All right. Uh, community members started offering a reward, and it got uh, it got up to thirty thousand dollars for any evidence. That's a lot of money. Especially that real community. Quick. That community really rallied around Ayla. They're really trying to bring her home. Yeah, and, and they still are. Yep, I mean, this, this... they are. That's what's crazy. Um. At that, that same day, state yep. police uh, evidence response team parked a van in his driveway. So I, I think at this point here, they're probably dusting for fingerprints or looking for blood. Right. Um, you know, they're kind of checking all of those kind of things. Yep. And uh, on the 27th, investigators from four police agencies continue to search the following up on more than 300 tips. At How this do you point. follow up on 300 tips? Yeah. I, I think That's what you're going to do. I mean, I'd imagine when you get 300 tips, you got to you got to probably look at the more probable ones first right you know and some of them are you know oh we saw ayla in florida well you know what that one's probably the one that's gonna wait yeah probably you know jake why don't you tell us what happened the following day on the 28th the it looks like uh justin releases another statement through the waterville police repeating that he again doesn't know what happened to his daughter uh also the warden service decides to call it quits with its large-scale ground searches in the area uh, it seems like at this point they've uh, moved on to something else. There had to have been a reason they stopped investigating. Wonder what they found in the house. They've been they've had the house sealed up for what? Uh, do, 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 three days? Four days? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, four days at that point. They sealed it up Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. You know, things aren't looking good here. And I think I think part of the reason why they wrapped up the ground search, you're not going to find her. You're not going to find her alive out there. No, not at, at, this, at point. this point. Not at this point. You know, so it's, I think they're focusing probably primarily on the house. Yeah, I think what it all it all went down on the seventeenth. Yeah. You know, during what all are the of chances, this, unfortunately. During all of this, Justin really isn't communicating a whole lot with Trista. Really? Yeah, he's avoiding her. And in fact on the twenty ninth, uh Trista I would appears think on the Today Show and she pleads with Justin to communicate with her. That's kind of weird. You would think they'd want to be in communication. Yeah. To some to some extent. Well, I had read I mean, a, your kid's missing. I had read a report. You know, he's kind of behaving weird too. You know, I'd read a report that that uh, and, and, and I don't want to jump ahead here, but there's a, another candlelight vigil, and he's one of the first people to leave. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Now on huh. the uh, interesting on the thirtieth, things start kind of kind of start getting interesting a little bit. I mean, what we've already kind of assumed 
the police announced foul play is suspected in what is oh, now considered no. a criminal case. Yeah, yeah. Maine State Police major crime units take the lead in the investigation. Even Massachusetts detectives start joining the efforts, providing uh, investigative tools at this house. Oh, no. So they they're must really, have found something at the house. Yeah, then. they're stepping it up. In fact, you know what? They, they did. Um, what did they? Oh, Jesus. Do yeah. I even want to continue to read down this timeline? Well, we're going to get a little bit further on uh, – as, as we progress a little bit further into this, I think we're going to discuss a little more about what they find at his house, in, uh, specifically in the basement. Uh, but leading up to that, uh, on the 31st of December, yeah, they've released the occupants back to their home. So now, Justin... Here, and, we've cleaned your house for you. Now you need to move back in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hmm. actually, on, on the 1st, on New Year's Day, they the whole family moves back in. Oh, good. Time to throw a party. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah well, no. Yeah, hopefully not. Hopefully no. not. No. Uh, on the on the second of January, DiPietro grants an interview to the Morning Sentinel and NBC's Today Show, uh, pleading for Ayla's safe return. You know, so no. he, he's he's making an effort now to reach out to the media, which we know the media. You know, we have negative attitudes on the media, but I think a lot of times when there's a missing child or a missing person, mm -hmm. the media can help as far as keeping the story out there and active. Yeah, absolutely. I remember him saying in one of the one of the videos I watched for uh, research here that he, what the hell did he say? I actually remember him saying that he, he didn't really want to push it that far in the media. And in the same video was, I think it was his dad or Trista's dad was like, what the fuck you don't, what do you mean? You don't want to push it in the media in today's world. That's how you get the word out. Oh yeah. And yeah. Definitely. That, it's been that way for a while, but just to go on and say, yeah, thanks for helping, and then, you know, move on, like that that doesn't seem to be conducive to what you're trying to do. I mean, you lost your kid, aren't you? A little bit upset. Now the media starts digging in at this point, though. Uh, you know, he's so he's. The, let's just kind of recap here a little bit. State police kind of, you know, they closed off his house. They took what evidence they felt they needed from the house. They released the house back to them. Justin's acting kind of funny, Jake. You know, I mean, this isn't to me, yep. you know, like you said, as far as uh, the media, you know, being a tool for you to utilize when your right. child's missing. He's not really using the media. He, in fact, it seems like he's trying to shy away from the media. And you'll see up until this and day. He's trying to shy away from Trista. Of, why? Of course. Why? Why? You know, uh, that's the mother, mother of your kid. Whether you're, you know, I, I don't know. Mother of your missing child. Yeah. Yeah, I should have added that in. It's not that, like they're together at that point, but I need to stop hitting that. Um, not like they're together at that point, but your kid's missing. It's the mother of said child. Maybe you should be in communication. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, Justin, uh, eventually, you know, eventually, I don't know if this is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing at this point he's lawyered up. I'm guessing at this point he's lawyered up and he's under some kind of counsel of somebody, you know, because on the 4th, of January, yep. he, he grants a second interview to the Morning Sentinel and challenges Nancy Grace to spend a day with him. You I know would what? love to see Nancy Grace spend a day in Maine. I challenge Nancy Grace to spend a day with us in the shed. Yeah, no, I couldn't <laughs> stand her. I <laughs> fucking no, nope. There's not enough beer in this shed. Now to touch on on uh, you know earlier, I'd mentioned that Ayla had a broken arm. Yeah, uh, he says Ayla broke her arm when he fell on her in November. His mother, Phoebe DiPietro, who owns a 29 Violet Avenue address now, they're yep. staying in her house. Uh, she says that she had uh, – I'm sorry. I'm assuming they're staying in the house with her and she's living with them, that's, right? That's what I think. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that would that, make sense. It's her house unless she's got a second property that she's letting Justin and whoever live in. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but she said that she, she was cooperating. She signed her home over to the investigators to do the search. Yeah. And uh, I wonder who this Phoebe is because she's kind of in and out. And the funny thing is, <coughs> on kind of a side note to this story, I noticed, you know, because, you know, Jake and I have done a lot of research leading up to this. and Yeah, I'm exhausted because of it. You know, uh, watching some of the old media coverage, she struck me as a bully, Jake. I don't know if she kind of – Really? Yeah, you know, bullying uh, Ayla, what did you do with my granddaughter, all this, you know, just and, – and acting like she was running the show, like she was running the investigation. And, and Justin – Justin also has signs, you know, like he obviously has learned this kind of behavior from her because this guy's had priors. I mean he's gone to court for, you know, other type of 
um, what would you call it? violent type behavior towards other people? Really? Yeah. So let's just kind of keep that in mind as we mull the story. Yeah. A little bit. You know what I mean? Okay. As this story progresses, keep keep that in mind. I don't know if we kind of painted that picture for people enough earlier. I don't know that if we did. He's not a nice guy. You know. Um, now now to kind of go back to what we're saying on, on now this is between the dates of January sixth and January eighth. Yep. Of two thousand and twelve. DiPietro appears on the New England Cable News to discuss his efforts to find Ayla. Phoebe DiPietro tells the CNN. Mom. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, right, Justin's yeah. mom. She tells CNN she didn't hear anything in her home that night before Ayla was reported missing. Oh, so it seems like she lives there then. Yes. Then she appears the next day, right, to clarify that she was not at the home uh, that, that Ayla was missing. So I don't know, Jake. Wait, what do you she think doesn't. Of, yeah, what do you think of that? No, she says uh, uh, on the 6th or that she was at the home. Okay, well, I, I look at it uh, a couple of different ways there. When it says that she... Okay, she says she didn't hear anything in the house uh, the night before Ayla was reported missing. Obviously, she couldn't have heard anything if she wasn't there. Maybe she was there but didn't spend the night. Right, but... Uh, could it have been a slip, Jake? This, I mean, could it, it have been a slip? Could've, it could have just hear- been... Yeah, well, it could have just been... You know, I didn't hear of anything bad happening from, you know, at the house that night. I mean, maybe she was nervous. I, I don't talk to CNN often. Yeah, well, I don't know I don't how think... I would feel if, if I was, you know. Have you ever talked to CNN? Never. Oh, okay. Never. All right. I mean, all <laughs> you right. Know what I mean? Well, so, today I learned. Well, there you go. You know what I mean? So it could have right. been something like that. but Right. It could have just been being nervous for the camera and going through a lot at the moment. I mean, hello, your granddaughter's missing. It's part, right. Yeah. Right. And, th- you know, she's got a lot going on. Right. Um, but still, this was noted that she says she's there, then she says she's not there. Another little side. Tid- well, she, it doesn't say specifically that she says she was that she was there the night before. No, she, you're right. She just or says the, that she didn't hear anything. Right, exactly, and that, and that could be that's your phone. That could be construed, like you know, like I was saying, she may not have heard of anything bad coming from the house because if something bad was going on in the house, I would assume that Justin would call her. If it was, you know, if it was that, your, yeah, your granddaughter I mean, or, like, the house is burning down or something like that, you would think he'd give her a call. You know what I mean? It's not that difficult. Right. Maybe that's all that she meant by that. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe we're I, thinking I don't too wanna, much about the statement. I don't want to want to point. I don't want to uh, attribute malice where it's not there. You know what I mean? Right. Right. We just got to state, you know, the information that we found. Right. Uh, what was it? Tenth? Yeah. Now, a couple uh, days later on, on January 10th. Yeah, January 10th, uh, state police and the warden service uh, dive team searched parts of the Kennebec River and the Mesolonsky Stream. McCausland, whoever the hell that is. He's actually the, the investigators? Uh, I believe he's the, the lead. Uh, is he I don't lead? know what you call him. The number one, the numero uno for the state of Maine. Oh, no I shit. I believe. I don't know if he still is, but at the time. And you'll find, actually, with some of the stories that we've researched, Jake, that that's going to be a familiar name. You'll get to know that name. Ah, okay. That's good to know. Okay, uh, so he says the investigators have received more than 600 tips but have not come to a conclusion. Um, McCausland adds that the police encourage Ayla's fam- family members to speak to the news media about the search. Reynolds appeared, Trista Reynolds repeal, uh, appeared on the Today Show and said she had spoken to Justin but hadn't gotten the whole truth about what happened that the night the Ayla disappeared or that Ayla disappeared. Bleh. That's interesting. Yeah. Now I think she's starting to doubt him. I wonder if that's if that happened only at that point, or if she doubted him beforehand. Dude, because I, I know if I well, I'm, again, I can't say I know because I'm not a parent, but I feel like if that was my kid and the person that had custody of my child wasn't communicating with me, that would be a problem. It's kind of off. Yeah, it's kind of off. That's not okay. And and I got I got a feeling, Jake, that she doubted him long. Long before this. You think so? I think so. You know what? There's no signs of... I mean, nothing's black and white in this story yet, but I mean, there's there's no signs of forced entry. Right. You know? There's no signs of forced entry. Now, wasn't it true that they they had a really rough relationship, like, right before all this went down? Yeah, I don't or think they were there getting something along. something going on? They were not getting along. They were feuding. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And Trista went to, uh, went to rehab. Yeah. And Justin got custody and blah 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 i believe i think we talked about this in the very beginning trista yeah trista filed for custody 
two days before all this happened. Yeah. And, and do you Justin, think do you think that bothered him? Well, I mean, he had had the child since October on his own. Right. But that's wh- not very long. But why would I mean? I'm, I'm sure that's a tough thing. But why would that make you want to do something to your kid? Yeah, I, you no. know what, Jake? I think. And again, it's speculation. He, th- these are young people. Right. And yeah, they were what? I think she was like 24 at the time. They were young people, you know. So I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it could be a number of things. Maybe this guy didn't want to be a parent anymore. Maybe he didn't want to pay the child support. Maybe he wanted to be free. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Hey, don't listen. Know. Don't attribute. Don't attribute murder to him. He I didn't know. do it. We don't know what he. We did. don't know. We, we don't, don't know, know if he did anything. We don't know. We it's, don't know. It's not looking good right now. Not so far in this story, and I'll tell you on no. January 10th. Uh, you know, to go back to that date that you touched on, at this point they had received over 600 tips. Yeah, I think I, I think we had said that, but they still needed more. They still needed more. That's a lot. And McCoslin is now, like you said, pointing to the family to speak. Yeah. So that what? tells now, me that the state police are definitely kind of leaning towards, you know, being suspect of the family, you know, doing something here. Okay. So, question: Why would they have to encourage the family to speak to the media? Is that a normal thing that they do? Of course, yeah, and, and like we discussed earlier, you, the more you put it out to the media, the more it shows it in the light. Well, right, but I okay, well, okay, I guess I was looking at it in the in the aspect where it's like, wouldn't you want to be speaking? Well, I'm thinking about it like, wouldn't you want it to be speaking to the media? Do they have like, did they have to actively push these people to talk to to the media, or were these people, or were they just doing that for the camera? You know what, Jake? I don't think they had to push Trista at all. I, I think, don't think she so was either. very forthcoming. She's she's been forth. She's actually put on events, yep, uh, to raise you know a- attention to her daughter and to raise money for different things. Yeah, it's not Trista that that they have to push to the media. It's really Justin at this point. And, I and still, I remember watching some of the uh, some of the press coverage with him in it, and he seemed almost um, almost too relaxed for what was going on around him. It didn't. It didn't sit right with me. Now, that same day on the 10th, uh, Trista Reynolds, she tells a Today Show that she'd spoken to Justin. Yep. And she had gotten you know, some of the truth, but she doesn't feel like she's gotten the whole truth about what happened the night that, that Ayla disappeared. Uh, three days later, in a third interview to the Morning Sentinel, which, by the way, has since changed name. Is that the it 13th? Me, yep. Okay. It took me like an hour of reading. I think it's... It's like the Central Maine something now. It's a totally different paper name anyway. Um, Justin gets in the paper, says he took a polygraph test, but the police didn't show him the results. That's interesting. Mm. I wonder if they, oh, I wonder if they're uh, not required to show you your results or how that works. I think Justin didn't want to release the results myself. And well, that was he, his I, don't think, I don't think he has to release the results. He, I think that would be something left to the discretion of the cops. That's right. And you know what? While we're, while we're talking about lie detector, I just want to say right now that you can't use them in court, okay? And here's my opinion of lie detectors while we're throwing this out there. Yeah. Is that you could take a lie detector, Jake, and we could hand the report to, you know, two, two separate of these, you know, quote-unquote experts. One of them will say, oh, Jake, you're a, you're a fucking liar. And the other one will say you're telling the truth. Uh, it, it goes by... You know, and, and I've actually read about that when I was researching this case. So I'm kind of skeptical of lie detector test myself also. So it's subject to the interpreter in a way. In a lot of ways. I was watching something on, uh, I think it was Netflix the other day about, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't Netflix. It was uh, YouTube. It was how to spot the difference between um, a narcissist, a psychopath, and a sociopath. And psychopaths don't even register. You got to empty that. Yeah, I do. We've been working a lot in the shed. <laughs> yeah. Um, psychopaths don't even register on the polygraph because they – it doesn't bother them. They don't have a response yeah, to actually, lying. You know, as we've been kind of, you know, launching this podcast thing, I actually saw the same thing. I probably saw the same probably uh, Netflix show. Uh, oh, I think it was YouTube. I'm pretty confident it was YouTube. It was like a 10-minute video. Hey, grab your phone. You put it right in front of the heater. Oh, yeah. You're going to melt that shit. Melt that phone. Whoops. Yeah. Stories from the shed. I mean, what can I say? Stories from the shed. I burned my phone. <laughs> uh, so that same day on the, on the 13th, uh, not only uh, does he say it's not released to him, the contents, but DPH also contends that being told the results is irrelevant. Mm, he, you know? Not really. Yeah, well, that's what he says. Yeah, well, I, I don't agree. 
That's that's pretty relevant. Yeah. Well, he says he went in there and oh, he knows and he smoked it. He smoked it. I was just gonna smoke say him that. if you got him. Yeah, basically, like you know, you smoked it. I smoked it. He says I told the truth. That the only thing the state police, uh, uh, I guess, uh, investigator McCausland, uh, lead investigator, says is that it, it takes special training is required to interpret, you know, what these what these polygraph mean, and that's why, you know, like like I was saying earlier, Jake, special training. You look at it one way, I look at it another. Yep. You know. What oh, you- did you did you mention that uh, McCausland says that uh, Justin knows how he did because we told him? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Ah, yeah. yeah. See, that's a pretty important piece that we just left out. Sorry, yeah. guys. No, no. Well, um, and if you got nothing to hide, then hide nothing, right? right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, McCausland says Justin knows how we did because we told him. But then Justin comes back that being re- being told the results is irrelevant if I can't see them. Smells like a stale fart to me, Jake. That doesn't uh, see. He's not wrong though. In, in some way. He's kind of lying. He, you know, he was told the results, and he's saying he wasn't told he, the results. He sounds like a 14-year-old play, you know, playing fucking smartass with their parent. He's not bright. You said it, not me. He's not bright. You said it, not me. Why don't you tell us what happened on the 16th? I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever comes next, next in this fucking timeline. Uh, Angela Harry, a acquaintance of Justin, launched a website that describes the events of... December 16th and 17th, the account, Harry says, Angela, that's a fucking crazy name. Angela Harry. Angela Harry was compiled from near daily phone conversations with Justin. Oh, he can talk to this bitch, but he can't talk to the mother of the kid that's missing. Sounds like a biased website. That's fucking annoying. Uh, the next day, the second candlelight vigil, vigil, vigil. The the, the, the. This is the 17th? Yep, yep. This is the 17th. Is held in Waterville. And Justin actually showed up to this one. But you know what? He was actually the first one to leave, and he refused to speak to media. I kind of can't blame him. Yeah, Candlelight what, vigil for my daughter. What Go don't away. We, why don't we talk about that a little bit, Jake? You know? How about this, though? Uh, you know what he says? He says he's only there. He says, I'm here to support the community that's searching for my daughter. That's such a weird thing to say kind of a weird thing to say i feel like i i would say something like i want to thank everybody for coming out here and showing their support for the search of my daughter right that's what i i think i would be saying you yeah know? I'd right be, i'd be more i guess i would show the uh, more gratitude i wonder if he could have gotten involved in actually searching for his daughter and di- or did he is that a thing i remember watching another another press thing today about um trista was gonna was trying to go look for Ayla, but police had actually told her to stay out and let them let them in the search, even though there was how many volunteers? Yeah, well, Trista so was I'm curious how that how that kind of Trista broke down. Was, was deeply involved at that time, and, and she's still deeply involved today. Yeah, I believe you know she just yeah. In fact, uh, you know, kind of kind of talking about Trista, the following uh, two days after the polygraph, I mean, I'm sorry, wow, well, uh, feeling those beers. Two days after the candlelight vigil, now yep. we're talking on on uh, January nineteenth. Now, uh, Trista takes her polygraph, but she was unable to complete it due to uh, medical condition. Did you find anything on that, Jake? No. What? Medical conditions? Medical conditions. Maybe she was smoking the reefer. No. No. I know you can't take no. a polygraph if you smoke that. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, that's all I came up with, Matt. Oh, I should smoke more weed then. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're that concerned about that. You know? I don't think anybody's really looking at Trista. I mean... No. Ayla wasn't in Trista's care. Right, exactly. Trista had to give, well, she didn't have to, but she gave up custody of Ayla to Justin while she cleaned herself up. She was making positive moves in her life, or trying to at least. You she know what was, I mean? And yeah. w- w- what's she going to do? Go, how is she going to, you know, no signs of forced entry. How is she going to get in and do something to Ayla? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Why would they, why would they even think that? No, well, Justin does. Justin actually at a at one point says, "Well, Trista was in the Waterville area that day." So he's kind of almost insinuating that maybe Trista had something to do with it. I don't think Trista had anything to do yeah, with it. That don't sound right. We're gonna fast forward a little bit to January twenty fifth, okay? Yep. Oh, Waterville so. police deny a request by the Morning Sentinel for an audio recording or transcript transcript of D. Pietro's December seventeenth nine one one call. Uh, Deputy Chief Charles Rumsey uh, cites that main, main law saying that the release of investigative intelligence 
could hinder the investigation. Huh, that's interesting because the video we had played earlier on actually was part of the trans or was the transcript. So I wonder if it's just they can't release it while the investigation is going on, yeah. and they have to wait until the investigation closes. I don't is think that this how that is, works. Yeah, and I don't think this is significant though. But it, well, I mean, to an extent. Why don't you tell us what happened on the uh, on January twenty seventh? Kind of looking forward a little bit. Uh, the Reynolds family announces. Yeah, I see it. Uh, the Reynolds. The, 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 the. <laughs> These beers are fucking kicking my ass. Yeah, dude. well, you know, it's part of oh the shed. God, yeah, part you of the ain't sh- kidding. Part this of the is shed. Ridiculous. Talk. Uh, the Reynolds family announces that two more of Ayla's maternal family members have taken polygraph tests. Ayla's uncle Ronnie Reynolds passed the test the day before. I'm assuming. Hold on, flip. Before, and her maternal grandmother, Becca Hansen, couldn't complete the test because she was on medication. So I wonder if that's something, probably not what uh, Trista was dealing with as far as her polygraph, but yeah. apparently, uh, if if you're on medication, then I would assume some sort of medical c- condition could hinder you from taking a polygraph as well. Yeah, yeah, and I, um, I don't, I don't know if that really matters. I don't. I mean, these people were not players that were around. Ayla at the time of her disappearance. Right. But All right. This I, I think it just further proves the uh, Reynolds innocence. I think to so. To be honest with you, you know, her brother, pa- I'm assuming to be her brother, uh, passes a lie detector. She can't take it, but she wasn't really around. Yep. Uh, you know, it just, I think they're just doing this to kind of tie up loose ends. All right. Here's where it gets good. Here's where it gets really, really, really good. It, it feels weird to go through this timeline knowing all of this stuff and then having to kind of like walk through it, but you know the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I don't think we're, we're going to get to know the end of this one just yet. No, not yet. Well, you know what I'm saying. Hopefully we get to do an update episode. I hope so, but the update episode ain't going to look so good. I think the state actually, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that at the very end. Yeah. Um, Okay, January 28th. This is a month and a half after Ayla originally went missing. If you remember correctly, this is back on December 17th. Yes. Yep. Uh, McCausland, I'm assuming, again, is the lead invest. Is he the lead investigator? Yeah, and you're okay. going to hear his name. Let me. You know what? Let me uh, Give me a second. I'm going to get exactly who this guy is because you're going to hear this name. This okay. Is a, uh, well, while you do that, I'll continue. Okay. Okay. Um, this dude announces that police doubt Ayla was abducted from her home, and Justin's explanation does not pass a straight face test. And this is where it gets interesting. This is where I, it makes me angry. <laughs> um, later that day, police announced that blood was found at 29 Violet Ave during the December search. Uh, shortly after the announcement, DiPietro and Reynolds appear together at a third vigil in Waterville. It is the first time they have seen each other since Ayla disappeared. That's a long time. That's a very long time. It's a long time that they haven't seen each other, number one. And number two, that's a long time to wait for the announcement of blood. That's not okay. Um, The next day, the same investigator comes out and says the blood is Ayla's that was found in the house. This guy looks like he's a... uh... This is uh, not looking good. I think he's on top of the state, you know, state police. Oh no shit. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I don't, I don't really understand how law enforcement, oh, the structure okay. of it, but he looks like he's the. Uh, What's his title? Uh, you know what? I, I was just looking real quick here. I oh, mean, I okay. can, I can, I can post it on Facebook if anybody oh. asks. But yeah, uh, he just looks like he's just uh, the numero uno for for the main state police. All right. Now this is this this is kind of strange, Jake, and, and I know you and I both kind of looked at the. Um, the crime scene, I guess we can call it. The crime scene point, map. Map of the basement where Justin was staying with, with Ayla. Supposedly, I read something else this week that Ayla was staying in a bedroom upstairs. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah, I heard something like that too. Yeah. Um, but why don't you tell us what you saw when you looked at the uh, image of the basement? The crime scene map is scary. Um, it, it's, uh, it's pretty gross, man. Let me pull it up. I can actually Google it. Yeah. Real I mean, quick. There was, it's there was it's stuff blood out there. everywhere. It is really bad. It's all over his bed. It's all over the TV. It's really it's really nasty. Uh right here. Do, do, do. Nope. That's not it. I mean there's a lot of alcohol bottles found. I mean 
Yeah. I, I, that doesn't mean anything. No, it think, doesn't. Necessarily. I mean, it doesn't make him dad of the year. No, it definitely doesn't make him dad of the year to leave empty bottles everywhere. But. All right, here we go. Yeah, looking at this map here. This is, we're currently looking at the map of the upstairs of the house. Yeah. When do you describe the upstairs of the house, the layout? Uh, well, you're coming up the stairs. And, oh, wait, where's the front door? Where the fuck is the front door? Right here? No. No, I don't know. I can't even tell. Well, there's the car. External stairs to the side entrance in the hallway basement. Yeah, okay. And this doesn't does do much for our listeners here, but to kind right. of try to tie a picture in for you. Yeah, there, okay. So on the first floor of the house, there's a, if you're coming into the house to the right, at the very end of the hallway is Ayla's bedroom. And uh, they found a baby doll of Ayla's with blood smears on its face and arms on her bed, along with her ladybug pillow and a princess blanket. Um, she had slippers with dried blood spots on them. Uh, there was blood in one of the vehicles, uh, on the left shoulder strap of the car seat and some dried puke. And uh, this is coming from the perspective of someone who works in the auto, auto field. Um, the dried puke is not really a shock to me. And this might be shocking to some listeners to hear, but. There are more cars that come through, um, I would say, a reconning position, like a reconditioning type thing, that have vomit and dried food and mold and gross stuff in them than not. Are you saying it's, that maybe they're just slobs? It, I mean, that, it's that, possible. Is that, is that what you're I saying mean, now? I mean, dude, there was one vehicle that I cleaned when I was working at a recon shop that had literal human shit underneath the seats. So I, I just don't put anything past people. And I've cleaned blood out of cars too from not so, not so great car accidents. And it's, uh, it's bad. I mean, you know, my wife and I have cleaned, you know, on, on a side note, I guess, you know, we've cleaned apartments. And the, stuff, the way that people will live is just disgusting. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Maybe that doesn't mean anything. What yep. do you know about the basement? The basement is uh, pretty pretty scary, too. So you come down the stairs. It's all dirty clothes and a couch and uh, Justin's bed with a fist-sized stain of his daughter's blood. Uh, there's blood all over the TV and the floor and on the fan cord. Uh, there is a blue plastic tote with... A bloody sheet inside it it's it's nasty looks like a lot of blood now uh one of justin's i think it was justin's aunts was interviewed mm -hmm. and was asked why do you think there was so much blood there and she said something like well the child had a lactose issue which not to get to you know i have a lactose issue the child there's had a not lactose blood all issue? over my house from a lactose issue no i i haven't I've never heard of that. I, you know, I don't know. I'm not lactose intolerant or anything, but why would you leave? Why would you leave blood spatter on the side of your TV, on the floor, on the wall? Why would, why would you sleep in a bed with a fist sized stain of blood in it? That's disgusting. That's not, that doesn't add up. So. There's something going on in that house. Now, yeah, that doesn't add up to me. That doesn't even, that doesn't feel right at all. Now, on January 28th, McCausland announces that the police doubt that Ayla was abducted from her home. And DiPietro explains, and, and explain, I'm sorry, he explains that DiPietro does not pass the straight face test. Yes. You skipped one. Or you went back one. Yeah. My bad. We're getting used to this, guys. Sorry. We can cut that out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Uh, er earlier that same day, though, police announced that blood was found everywhere. You said that, too? Yep. Okay, we'll cut all this shit out. On January 29th... Nope, keep going. February 3rd. No, on February 3rd, state police and warden, services dive, warden service dive teams returned to the Kennebec River in Massalonsky Stream. At a news conference, McCausland says that state police need more tips. And at 11.15 p.m., 
Phoebe DiPietro calls 911 to report vandalism at her home after two windows were shattered from the outside. No suspects were immediately mm-hmm. found. Someone's getting what's coming to them. It, it, or was it something doesn't sit right? Or is somebody targeting this family? Yeah, something doesn't sit right. Why is there blood all over your house from your dog? Excuse me. Jesus Christ. This beer is killing me, man. Um, can I change my Scully Finger rating at this point? Yes, you can. <laughs> I give it a three. <laughs> it's gone killing down. me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to focus, and I can't focus. And you've only had. Uh, you only, only had six, had one. Jake. Only had one. <laughs> Get out of here. It ain't a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> That's right. You would have had ten. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why don't you tell us what happened on uh, on the February 13th? February 13th. It was the day before Valentine's Day, so hopefully something good. Uh, tr- Augusta attorney Steve, Steve Borget. Bor- Borget. He's French. Yeah, I don't even think that's pronounced the French way. C'est c'est bon. Bourget. Bourget. Steve Bourget. Bourget. You're right. Bourget. Steve Bourget. Announces Ta-da-da he has Bourget. been representing Phoebe and Alicia DiPietro. Is that the girlfriend? Uh, no, that's Justin's sister. That's Justin's yeah, sister. The sister's Courtney Roberts. Since early uh, the January. The girlfriend's Courtney Roberts. Since early January, and they have no idea what happened to Ayla. Okay, question. His sister was at the house, correct? His sister was at the house, and his girlfriend, okay, Courtney yeah, Roberts, we, we was at the house. Okay, yeah, we discussed this. Like yeah. I said, it's hard to follow at this yeah. point. Um, so that makes sense. I was going to ask why she needed to be represented, and obviously they both need to be represented because Phoebe is the homeowner, and... Alicia shows at the house. Yeah, at this point, everybody's lawyering. Right, lawyered exactly. Right yeah, yeah, smart. Um, in Portland, that same day, Ayla's maternal family announces that the state police told them Justin DiPietro bought a life insurance policy on his daughter shortly after she went under his care. That's kind of interesting. Huh. Sorry, did he plan everybody. on Did he plan on having her a while? Well, I watch a lot of uh, forensic files, and a lot of times you'll see husbands or wives buying life insurance policies on 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 their significant others and then yeah. poof and then poof huh gone. all of a sudden they're gone yeah so doesn't look good almost makes it look like he might have planned to do something i hope not i mean but well, let's just kind of recap here right he's got a history now i'm not gonna say he broke his kid's arm on purpose i right. wasn't there right but this kid has got a history of getting hurt under his care under his care yep um He's got a bad attitude, and his mother's got a bad attitude, and they're kind of bullies, you know? So mm-hmm. I, to be honest, do you know what I, th- I mean, I don't know. Are we ready to kind of speculate on what we think happened here, Jake? I think, I think he did something. Yeah, well, what do, you, what do you, you tell us? Tell us what you think. I, I think he did something. I think he, uh, uh, whether, it, whether it was on purpose or, you know, by accident, I think something happened in that house. I think he did something to her. And uh, he's not admitting to it. Just the press coverage that I watched today in preparation for this, just it was it was disgusting to watch. It made me sad because the mom is like very clearly upset in all of her coverage. I don't think you can't you can't fake being no being upset and crying on TV like she was crying. Like you can you can fake emotion, but not like that. Not like that. Did you she, see the one where she? Is chasing Jess, Justin outside of the courthouse. Yeah, if she's he, like, just just tell me something. Yeah. he's running. He's running. Yeah, he's exactly. Clean. And he's not even looking at her. He's looking the other way and freaking not popping his collar or anything. But he he's giving off this douchebaggy. I don't want to talk to anyone. The world's about me kind of vibe. I don't know. He, it didn't it didn't sit well with me. And if you if you knew something was up, or if you or if you felt like something was up, I think I would do the same thing that she did. Yeah. If he's not talking to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go fucking find him. Gonna chase him. Yeah, chase exactly. Him. And so, I don't care if it puts me on TV, but that, that's kind of what I want. I want him to say something. So Jake, what happened that night? I think he fucking killed her personally. Yeah. Do you want to know how I think it, it laid out? I'm interested. Well, I don't really know. I'm still, th- you know, there's a, there's one thing I'm debating here. I don't know if it was Justin and his fucking bad attitude that got out of control and something happened to her or if he just said you know before you know even days before weeks before i don't want to i don't want to be a father i don't want to deal with her i don't know what happened but something happened to that girl to that little girl and justin knows and courtney roberts knows and alicia reynolds knows those three people know they were in that house they, but they all maintain the same story that they don't know what happened and that it must have been forced entry and that's a crock of shit. 
Yeah, if there's no signs of forced entry, it, you're not going to tell me they've rebuilt the house. It's fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? It's bullshit. And I feel like... Now, I don't, that's the only thing I don't know what happened. If it happened out of anger and he did something you know, crazy, or if it was something that he had thought about and executed and decided tonight is the night that I'm going to end my daughter's life and I'm going to move forward with my life and, and move to California, which is what he inevitably did. He ended up moving to California. Really? Um, yeah, he lives in Los Angeles right now. And, no shit. And now his sister, his sister, uh, Alicia Reynolds, and yep. his now ex-girlfriend, Courtney Roberts, yep. they maintain the same story, that they don't know what happened in that Waterville house that night. How do you not know? They know. There was a rumor that there was a party going on that night, too. Yeah, I had heard that. I, I almost wonder if something happens a, happened accidentally. No, they never found a body, Jake. They never found this little girl's body. So and they then, don't have a body to do a toxicology report on. Right. Did he drug her? In 2017, I think, they even uh, – Trista filed for the state to declare her uh, declare her dead. Yeah, I got that in my just notes kinda, here somewhere. Um, just to kind of close it out. Now here's the thing. Yeah, actually, that would be on May 30th, 2017. Ava yep. Reynolds was declared dead by the state of Maine. Now, I want to say that throughout this whole process, Trista Reynolds – Never wanted a dollar from Justin. By having her daughter declared dead, it forces Justin into a civil suit, civil right. trial, and that's going to force him to testify. Right. So he's going to have to talk under oath. So he's going to have to come back yeah, so in I'm, California if he's out there. Yeah, and I'm hoping we get a uh, – I'm really hoping we get a – It'd be nice to get some closure for this kid. Some kind of closure. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I picked this, this story to cover is this is our first podcast. We're a couple of main guys. This is a main story. We're drinking some main beer. Yep. Um, but it's one that's been on my mind, Jake. I gotta be honest. Um, it's been, I've thought about this ever since this kid was, you know, it was breaking news. This kid was missing. Does it hit harder for you because you're a parent? Yeah. And it, yeah. It, it, I'll be honest. It's a very upsetting thing to talk about, but I feel like we got to talk about this, Jake, because this kid's been missing for a while now. People know what happened. Yeah. And I think it's time that they come forward. You know, if any, if, if, you know, Courtney, Alicia, uh, Justin, anybody that knows anything. Please step up. Step up. It's time. It's time to say something. It's time to, you know, clear your conscience and let the truth come out because uh, this is terrible. You know, this is a loved child that, you know, you know, all, the, all with all these questions around her disappearance that haven't been answered. Yeah. Jake. So if anybody and, and if anybody else knows anything, you know, I mean, you know, contact one eight hundred the loss, or please contact you know the main state police, yeah, or, or your so local just, police. Just say something. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, I agree. I tend to agree with what the main state police thinks happened is that she was she was killed and buried in a in a toad or something in the ground, something that a metal detector won't. Won't Pick find up. or right, you know they just didn't get the dogs there in enough time where they're going to be able to s drag her scent. But she's somewhere. It's sad and uh, unfortunately, you know this there hasn't been a regular trial. Um, yeah, like so they're pushing for a civil trial now. But I, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping we can all hope. I'm that, hoping uh, something comes of this that um, can at least get some closure. I doubt we're going to get her back at this point. Not alive. No. Not a lot. Sucks. It sucks. It sucks. Um, We're not going to do a lot of these depressing stories. This is uh, this is hard, man. Yeah. These ones are hard. Yeah, but it's it's a you know what? Like I said, it, it's just one of those things we're putting out there. If somebody knows something, please come forward and you know kind of look at it as we're trying to help the the good, the good, right? Just trying to get some answers. Trying to get some That's answers. All. So. Uh, I guess this is pretty much it for our, for this first episode. Uh, yeah, bear with us, guys. This one was kind of rough. I'm feeling it. I hope the everybody beer, liked The beers it. are making me feel it. <laughs> uh, we'll get better at this. If the audio isn't perfect, again, we're just just bear with us. Um, there's there's better there's better content to come. I promise. Absolutely. You know, we'll plug our social media here at the end. But if you have any suggestions on, you know perfecting our podcast or, or stories you want us to talk about doesn't yes, necessarily have to be main us yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be main but please email us you know like us on facebook uh, we're going to be putting together an instagram real quick we got twitter you know at stories from the shed uh is it is it 
Store, I don't know. I don't remember what it is. Yeah. I haven't. I Stores deleted it from my phone. I'm going to put it back on. Give us a little bit. Uh, look us up on Facebook. Stories from the Shed, right? That's right. I'll, I'll, and I'll get to you. And uh, Jake, what's our email? SFTSpodcast at gmail.com. That's right. Also, uh, same thing for iMessage. SFTS at SFTS podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And once again, we'd like to thank you for tuning in and uh, th- uh, we like, you know, we'd appreciate it if you liked us and tell a friend about our podcast, please. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.